Welcome to How to Paint Creature Casters King of Ruin. After priming black, we base cut them with tank green. And now we'll start to highlight with cam light green. Next we'll shoot Ash Crimson from the bottom to kind of block in the first shadows. Next, we'll use a mix of cam light green and US gray light for a highlight. Ash Crimson didn't show up how I wanted it to, so I grabbed some Dale Rowney Purple Lake and started to push the shadows even more. We add some Dale Rowney Scarlet to the Purple Lake mix and start working on the shadows as well as color variations. Again, playing around with the skin tones, I decided to use De La Rowney Scarlet and airbrush it in several spots. Now we use Dead Flesh to add the highlight and kind of bring our greenish skin color back. Now we base coat our metal bits using gunmetal gray. After airbrushing, I like to break up 
some of that with some detail work using oil paints and this is a wash that stays flexible because I can for the most part wipe it off of areas that I don't want it and it gives me kind of an, an outline and helps me block in and decide my colors you see me do that several times and while using oil paints affords you some flexibility the downside is, is you need to make sure it's completely dry and then matte varnish over it. This typically takes 24 hours for it to dry. You matte varnish over it and then you can continue with your normal acrylic or water-based whatever you're using. If you have played any of the Elder Scroll games, you probably know the effect that I'm going for. There's an armor in that game called Diedrich Armor and it has this kind of green glow to it. And I was trying to pull that off here and I don't know if I got it, but I kind of like the result. Still working on the sword, we're going to grab some baby poop wash and airbrush some shadows in. And a good thing when you're painting these large models in separate pieces is to kind of place it on there and see how it looks compared to everything else on there just so you have some consistency. And now we base coat our leather with Cam Medium Brown. For the skull on the shoulder pad, we're going to use Army Painter Dark Stone as a base color. I wanted to see some details and also darken the base coat, so we're going to use some armor wash here. And then we'll do the highlight using Reaper Bone Shadow. Time for another random wash session. This time we're going to use Lamp Black and Van Dyke Brown. And this I just, I wanted to get the overall detail out of the model so I just coated the whole thing with this wash. Alright, time to get the sword looking a little glowy, so we're going to start highlighting more with light livery green. And to aid us with masking, we're going to use one of my favorite things, Silly Putty. So here we're going to use some of the sand yellow and we're going to try to airbrush the guts that he's 
pulled out of himself and I'm using the silly putty here again and I wanted to show you kind of how I put a little booger on where I need it and then I use a sculpting tool to kind of press it around it doesn't have to be perfect you just you know get it close enough so that you can do your airbrush work and get the bulk of it done and doing it this way I love it for organic models it's a time saver because trying to do tape on that no way all right, now we're gonna start working the shadows on the sword. I'm not sure if I've shown this technique before. Here we're using Windsor Newton Lamp Black, unthinned, and we're just kind of blocking in where we want the shadows, not completely covering it. And the idea is you place it, and then you take another brush, and you grab the edge and fade it down into the other stuff. Now, it takes some effort. You see me switch brushes here a couple times to try to get something that's firm enough to blend it out so that I don't have a hard line. Once I find it and I get the pressure right, it blends so fast. Oil paints are opaque for the most part. It gets you really nice blends very quickly so you can kind of see what direction you're going and make decisions based off of that. This works best on a matte surface, so matte coat your models that you're going to do and because of the matte coat, it's going to protect the model. So if you make a mistake, you can wipe it away with mineral spirits. All right, since we lightened up our guts, our intestines, whatever you want to call them, now I'm going to use an oil wash again to kind of pull out that detail so that I have a guide of what I want to paint next and whatnot. And I try to use a, a wash that's close to whatever was going to go on next. So red for this stuff made sense. Is it the final color? No, it's just a guide for me. But again, the flexibility of the oils, you know. All right, same thing we did on the sword with Lamp Black. Land your shadows, blend it out. And for his bandages, I figured let's go with the brown, but let's do kind of a yellowish color and tank brown did the job. Now we're going to use a mixture of matte black and scarlet red and base all his horns, nails on the feet and the hands and all the ones that are going to be going up his back, all the antlers. Oh yeah, this guy comes with a base. And we are going to base the base with electric blue and khaki. Here we're going to use a mix of tank brown and scarlet red and I was trying to mess with extreme angles so I didn't cover up the blue completely so I was spraying it almost completely horizontal so that it would catch just the bottom sides and some of the edges of that blue. skulls were done doing quick little pops with the airbrush using khaki. I didn't concentrate too much on the ones underneath him or actually many of them. You'll see the overspray there but you'll see it's because we're going to dry brush over a lot and it'll blend in to those. All right and now a dry brush using dead white.
So when I got done dry brushing the base, I decided, hey, let's take, you know, uh, a chance on these wraps. Let's bring out some of these highlights, knock it down again. It wasn't as yellow as I wanted it to be. So I know the baby poop wash is a yellowish brown and it works great for that. So give us some variation in the different browns that we have. You'll see also the ropes were painted red. I changed a lot of colors just because it's a lot of experimentation when I'm doing some of these larger detailed models. Some things I like, some things I don't. Okay, a little explanation in this gore section of the video. I'm using Uhu glue from the UK. A friend of mine sent me a couple tubes, uh, my buddy Leiden. I haven't found a US version, so if people know of a version that works well for doing this kind of gore, that would be great. I'm actually using computer ink as the tint for it and it works out fantastic as you can see here. This is another model that I prepared. It's not the same one, but I wanted to show you the technique there is you mix it together. You kind of grab one of those boogers that the Uhu turns into, put it on the model and then just start grabbing it and pulling it wherever you want little strings of gore. Then you can take the leftover ink that you have and color in add more black, more red, get your little variations in blood as you need it. For the ropes and bone, we're going to use heavy khaki as the base coat. Ah, you guys might have caught that you're starting to see the spines and they have already been painted. I forgot to film that part. Basically, I just threw my silly putty over the things on the model that I wanted to be red let them poke through and I airbrush scarlet red and blood red. And now I just do a quick overbrush on all these things using dead flesh. Now at this point I was running out of time on the model. I needed to go through it so if this stuff isn't going to look as nice as everything else, now you know why. All right, and to kind of finish off the rope and bones, we're gonna use sepia shade as a wash and just go over all those areas. Now, I put ash crimson on afterwards just to make the bone stand out a little bit different from the ropes and it looks more realistic to me. You see it in the final pictures. Now for the silver bits, we're going to use white aluminum for the edge highlights. When I'm done with my models, I like a matte coat. It photographs really well. It just gives you good color feedback if you do it throughout the paint process whenever you need to get a reference. I use Dead Flat from Modern Masters and I airbrush it. It dries super fast. It doesn't yellow. It gives everything the same sheen. I'm showing you this part because sometimes you don't want it to be matte. Maybe you want the mouth to be juicy. Maybe there's blood in there and you want that to be juicy too. My trick for that is to use clear nail polish, the gloss, and it works fantastic on gems, gore, whatever. And that concludes this video. I got another piece from Creature Caster that we're going to be doing in another video. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.